Hi, Kurt. Leonard Parker here with Finance Sierra SEO. Came across your website today and I put together this video to highlight some areas of opportunity that you can work on to improve your overall web presence, uh, namely your Google rankings. So I've broken this video into three separate parts. For the first part, I'm going to focus on your website and look at factors such as conversion optimization and your on-page SEO. For the second part of the video, I am going to talk about some of the more technical aspects of your website. And for the third part, I'm going to focus on link building. So I'll start here with your homepage. So I really love the layout, very clean, easy to navigate, uh, plenty of white space, but it also balances that with great content. Uh, so that's great. Uh, so if just a two optimization conversion optimization tips I saw that on your video or on your Kurt story page you had a few videos there and I always recommend to my clients to add some type of home page video to their or uh, a video to their home page just introducing yourself highlighting your firm highlighting your background because you have to think uh, out of all of the other financial planners in Naperville uh, that person has clicked on your website. So you want to start building that trust off the back. Um, so putting together a you know, quick, quick three to five minute video, just highlighting yourself always bodes well for getting people interested and getting them to contact you. Uh, second thing, I noticed that your contact dust button is way down here at the bottom. So if I you know just estimate that, that's one, two, Three, about three scrolls down and that's really what you want people to do when they land on your website it's great that they read your content but you really want them to take some action um, so I would definitely move that contact us button further up the page at least to where it's somewhere above the fold so they don't have to scroll to see it and I will also make your number here a little more prominent so maybe making it bigger or putting it somewhere else maybe by itself so that it stands out. Uh, one other thing, um, just from a trust and credibility standpoint, you can see here, uh, I'm in the Google Chrome browser right now, and it's giving a not secure message. And if you click on that, it says your connection to this site is not secure. You should not enter any sensitive information on this site, for example, passwords or credit cards, because it could be stolen by attackers. And from what I see, you're not selling anything, any products or anything directly on your website. Uh, but again, it's just that trust, building the, the trust factor. Someone who's not familiar with you or your firm, they land on your site and they see that message that uh, detracts from the trust that you're trying to build with them to manage their finances and their uh, really a big component of their life. Um, so, and that message is going to be very similar in Mozilla Firefox. It's going to also be a similar message in Internet Explorer. And what that tells me is that you don't have a SSL certificate installed through your, through your hosting company. Um, so that's definitely something I would take a look at um, if we were to find an opportunity to work together. Um, and, you know, lastly, it's not just the trust. This is actually starting to be a bigger ranking factor for Google. Uh, there was a recent study performed that showed that over 50% of the page one search results, and this is for all Google search queries, do have that SSL certificate. So it's definitely the, the, the direction that Google is going. So I'm not sure if you're a hockey fan, but as Wayne Gretzky said, uh, you always want to go to where the puck is going, not where it's at. So that's just, you know, really the mindset you should take with your digital marketing efforts. What are people not doing and where are the trends going? That's what you want to be doing. You want to be uh, what they call a early adopter. And so that's your SSL. And then finally, your, your SEO. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to only focus in on the title tags. And I see here you're doing some things right. So you have financial planner, Naperville, Illinois. And then you have financial advisor in Naperville, Illinois. So I highly suggest that you include your 
your firm's name, F F5 Financial Planning, here in the title tag. And for the home page, I will put that at the beginning and then have the little pipe symbol here in the middle. And then either have Financial Planner, Naperville, Illinois, or Financial Advisor, Naperville, Illinois. Um, and I'm not sure if there are other Naperville's out there. Uh, but Google's uh, search results, they're so smart that they'll know if someone's looking for a local advisor that you can, might be able to get away with Naperville Financial Planner or Naperville Financial Advisor, just so that you can save some space there. But definitely you want to include that your firm's name in that title tag uh, because Google really likes brands and your homepage is the most important page on your website. And not only does this help with your Google rankings, but if you look in the Google search results, so um, these are this is how your title tag would show. And so, yeah, if we had something like what I recommended, that'll tell people exactly your firm name and uh, what you do. And that's financial advising and financial planning. And then I even clicked on to one of your other pages here. Uh, let's see here, education planning. Now for this, this page, you're actually, you're including your, your firm's name, which is great. Uh, the only way thing I would do to optimize this is to include your location. So instead of just saying education planning, include something like Naperville education planning or Naperville financial planning for education, something like that. So the big takeaway here with your title tags, you always want to include your firm name, the keyword or topic of the page and your location. Just doing those three things, you'll would definitely position your, your pages to rank better in Google. And then finally, your blog. I think you're doing a great job of content marketing. And I see that you have these weekly morning motivations, which is great. Um, it's not necessarily you're trying to sell your services, but you are, you know, giving something 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 for people to read at the beginning of the week that's really motivational and really helps them get to get them through their day um, so one thing I would consider I know you have them here um, just maybe you know maybe mixing it up so maybe have your Monday morning motivation and then you know Wednesday or Thursday having something directly related to your services and you always want to come at the approach, uh, take it from the approach that you're trying to educate people and you're trying to answer their questions or their concerns. So if there's a common question that you're getting from your clients or your prospects, then that would be a great blog topic to write about. Um, and not only that, I understand you also have some social media pages, so that's great. But making sure that you're promoting that content on different websites, not just on social media, but also Web 2.0 properties, such as uh, StumbleUpon, Medium. Uh, if there are any popular local blogs in Naperville, making sure that you build relationships with that website, that website owner, so that you can, from time to time, uh, add a blog there too. And there are a lot of different sites. I use the process with my clients. It's uh, called If This Then That. And basically, if I post something to a client's website, it automatically syndicates to other websites that are connected. So uh, I think that could definitely be of use for you there. Now, uh, transitioning into the technical components of your website. So your website is mobile friendly. That's great. That's a major uh, ranking factor. Um, and you might have heard this, but Google is moving, on, moving to a mobile first index meaning that people really should optimize their websites for mobile devices before desktops. And it looks like you're ahead of the curve there. Now for your PageSpeed, this is a tool called PageSpeed Insights. It's a free tool from Google. So you can see here, I plugged in your URL and what it does, it gives you a score on a scale of 100 of just how fast your website loads. And you can see here, it gives you a different score for the desktop version of your site and the mobile version of your site. So something that, um, that caught me by surprise, and this is somewhat rare, is that your mobile low speed is faster than your desktop speed. But as you can see, there is still much area for improvement. 
And typically I like to see these scores at the minimum within the 80 to 85 range. And um, this is a huge ranking factor. Um, and not just for ranks, but just think about it from a usability standpoint. If someone hears about you from one of your other marketing uh, strategies and they decide to Google you and find you, and let's say they're looking at, at your website during their lunch break or while they're at line at the grocery store, and that low, that slow load speed can really dissuade them from clicking through your website and learning more about the superior value that you're offering your clients. And you never want to dissuade people for any reason to leave your site because not only do you lose that that, that prospective client, but that's not a really good uh, sign of engagement in Google's eyes. So uh, definitely you want to make sure that you work on these uh, website speeds. And Google here, they list a few things that you can work on, but if you're looking for that one action that will give you 80% of your, of your improvement, consider switching your hosting company. Um, I've worked with clients where a simple hosting change, once we got it installed, uh, we were able to improve their page speed scores by 20 to 30 points in a matter of a few days. So uh, this is definitely um, the first thing I would look at uh, when working on your website speed. And uh, hosting, that is something that my company, we provide uh, to our clients. So we would switch over your hosting, do all the technical aspects of it. We will also, I mentioned before, install that SSL certificate that would be included. And uh, we would maintain your hosting and your website performance. Uh, so if there are any issues, uh, we would be responsible for making sure those issues are resolved in a timely manner. And that wraps up the technical part of the video. And then the final part, I'm going to look at your off-page SEO. So your off-page SEO, I split it into your business listings and citations and your backlinks. And you wanna make sure that uh, starting off that your business listings and citations are on track. So this is another free tool called Moss Local. And it gives you a score on a scale of 100 of how well your business is represented online and how visible it is online. And you can see here, it looks at major sites such as Google My Business, Facebook, uh, Foursquare, Yelp, Bing Places, and a few other sites. And it gives you a score just based on how complete those profiles are and how inconsistent are there any duplicates. So I can see here you don't have any issues. So your issues boil down to incomplete listings. So for several sites, you don't have a listing at all. So that would be my first step if we were to work together to add your listings on, the, on these sites. The second thing, you can see these little red bubbles here indicate that you are missing some information. Looks like on your Yellow Pages profile, your Bean Places profile, and your Factual profile. So my next step would be to go in and go in there and to make sure that these that this missing information is completed, so that you will have complete listings and you'll have a nice score of 100%. Now you might be wondering, why is this important? Well, Google, as smart as those algorithms are, they're not human. So you or I, we could go to your website, we can say, okay, this is a legitimate website, he has a business email, he has great content, and there's even a way to schedule a, a book an appointment, which by the way, is a great ad, I'm glad that you have that. But Google, again, is a robot, so, they're not able to make discern whether you're a credible business or not. So what they do, what the algorithms do is look at your listings on these important business profiles to see just how credible you are. So make sure your information is correct across the board, make sure that all of the information is complete, and really just to make sure that you are who you say you are as a firm. And that wraps up the business listings and citations. The second part of the backlinks are your, or your, of, of your off-page SEO are your backlinks. So you can see here, this is another tool called Ahrefs. I plugged in your website URL and compared it with some of your local competitors. 
And what I see here is that uh, if I sort it by the total number of referring domains, you have two while your competitors all have more. And really the metrics you want to pay attention to here are your number of referring domains and your number of backlinks. And the easy way to think about this, let's look at a real world example. So let's say you ran for class president in high school and you had one good friend who voted for you 100 times, whereas your opponent had 100 friends who voted for him or her one time each. And so obviously your opponent's going to win the election because those unique votes are going to be weighed more heavily than those 100 votes from your one friend. It works the same way online. So you can think of referring domains as your friends or websites online and your number of backlinks as the number of votes they send to your website. So you can have one friend who sends you multiple votes or backlinks. And you can see here, Reason Financial has 24, while you have two. So definitely, you know, after we clean up some of these other things, I encourage you to start a link building strategy where you are getting uh, high quality domains from relevant and authoritative sources. Um, this is still a major ranking factor in Google's algorithm, even though it's growing in less importance, it's still one of those things when we talk about those actions you can take to get 80% of the result, improving this discrepancy here would definitely help with your rankings. And so that brings me to the end of the video. Uh, I haven't really introduced myself. My name is Leonard Parker. I am the owner of Financier SEO. We are a digital marketing agency that focus on building and optimizing digital marketing campaigns for independent financial advisors and financial services professionals. Uh, we specialize in SEO, social media marketing, content marketing, so blogging and promotion of blogs, uh, email marketing, pay-per-click advertising, and we also create lead generation funnels uh, for our clients so that their lead process can be automated over time. Uh, my team and I were based in Houston, but we have employees from all over the world. And many people ask why. I don't have a background in financial services. I do have a background in digital marketing, um, but I've been doing digital marketing for about the last six or seven years now, and I've specialized working with financial advisors for about the last six or seven months. And when, when people ask me the why, I learned at an early age the importance of financial literacy. I remember in middle and middle school and high school, I would read books about investing and budgeting and really learning how to plan out your financial goals so that you can achieve certain things or at least have the means to achieve certain things in life. And that knowledge has bowed me well as adult. As an adult, I had I was able to graduate from my top choice college without a cent of debt. And I've been able to cash flow uh, several businesses during my 20s where I haven't had to take out loans and uh, basically put myself in a, uh, a tough financial predicament. So, and that's really the gift that I want to help advisors bring to their clients because there are many individuals, there are many families, and there are many businesses out there who need their expertise. And I can see here, you actually specialized working with entrepreneurs and corporate executives. So uh, I definitely think it's a skill set and expertise that's needed. And I use my digital marketing skills to help advisors like you bring that to the table and bring that to the attention of more people. And so that's my why. So uh, I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope you have learned something from it. And I've included a green button here at the bottom of the video. Uh, anytime that you would like to book an appointment with me, we can talk about some of these topics in more detail. I would love to learn more about your firm, your background, and the unique value that you offer your clients. Uh, I really look forward to that. So please uh, book some time when you're available. And that brings me to the end of the video, Kurt. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Take care and have a great day.